Um, so uh, I'm a first year uh, PhD student uh, at Kerriot Vat uh, University. Uh, my supervisors are uh, Dr. Uh, Marcelo Pereira, uh, Jon Altman and uh, Kostas Zigalakis. Uh, so you may hear some uh, common things, but, um, uh, but uh, today but I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Markov chain Monte Carlo methods for the task of image restoration. And uh, let's start with um, the problem overview. So uh, as Costa said, the idea is that we have a blurred and uh, noisy image. Um, and our aim uh, is to uh, estimate the true image from its uh, noisy observation. Uh, so this is uh, typically an inverse problem. So we have uh, our, our image X, we have uh, our observation Y, and uh, these two are uh, related through a mapping or a measurement operator uh, at this form here, uh, where it denotes the noise random process. So in inverse problem, what we have is we have Y and we want to gain some uh, information about the cause about uh, the X uh, variety. So uh, in this presentation, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some reconstruction methods formulated in the Bayesian framework. And the reason is because in Bayesian statistics, uh, we can incorporate any observation process we have and uh, also the prior, uh, any prior information we have for uh, our true image. And so we can answer to the task of image restoration quite um, efficiently. Uh, so we are going to uh, tackle other tasks uh, in the Bayesian framework, such as uncertainty quantification. Uh, Costas gave some examples. So imagine that you have a tomography image of a brain and um, uh, there is a weird structure uh, in your reconstructed image. So is that maybe a tumor or it is an artifact, uh, a fault of uh, your stored image? So uncertainty is quite important in such applications. Uh, the difference, uh, I'm going to discuss about imaging problems. So Costas uh, uh, introduced problems where the noise was Gaussian. Now uh, my problem is quite different. Uh, so the noise would be multiplicative uh, and especially would be Poisson or binomial noise. And in the end, we are going to give, I'm going to give some examples of uh, real world applications. So let me start. Uh, with uh, setting the scene. So when we know the distribution of the noise, uh, what uh, we actually uh, know is the condition distribution of Y uh, given X. So uh, in the previous example, in the previous uh, noisy image that I showed you, uh, the observation Y was modeled uh, mainly as uh, this equation here. X was the tree image, A was a matrix, maybe rank deficient and observation matrix, and n was Gaussian noise. So this means mainly that y given x is distributed, uh, has a Gaussian distribution. So in my uh, problem, uh, y given x uh, will be given from uh, a Poisson distribution where the mean will be given for the measurement operator, uh, or it will be, let's say, um, from binomial distribution, or part more particularly also it could be Bernoulli, if, if tau here, uh, if, um, T here would be equal to one. Uh, and the probability will be given uh, from the measurement operator again. Uh, the problem with such likelihoods is that their nature is not, let's say, um, innocent. They are imposed some irregularities and uh, constraints. Uh, let's uh, have a look. So uh, suppose that A is a positive, uh, semi-positive definite matrix. Um, in the Poisson case, the log likelihood is going to take uh, this form here. Uh, so we already can spot, um, have an, uh, take a look to the logarithmic term, we, all, we already can spot some uh, issues. Uh, first, um, we have a non negativity constraint on X. Uh, second, we have the log, log, the log likelihood is not differentiable, differentiable at zero. This is an issue we will see later because many reconstruction methods uh, demand your log likelihood uh, being differentiable. Now we have an issue here. And uh, the presence of the rank deficient matrix uh, makes the problem uh, imposed. So uh, up to this point, uh, 
the network connectivity constraint will be tackled later because it's mostly an issue of practical interest, something that maybe concerns uh, our algorithms. Uh, but what we can tackle now is uh, the differentiability issue. Uh, so uh, in our we can tackle this issue with many ways, but in uh, our research, we introduce a known parameter beta uh, that models background events. And so the measurement operator take uh, this form. And the likelihood changes to this one. Now we can see that the log likelihood, the log uh, logarithm term now, uh, the likelihood is differentiable on uh, the space we are interested in. Uh, so let's give some examples of how the data looks like. So in the Gaussian case, we have our tree image, we have some noise. So what we actually have uh, is an image with some, you know, random fluctuations um, uh, around. Uh, now we have a, a different, a completely different physical interpretation of our data. The, in the Poisson case, the data represent pixel counts in a specific time period. Uh, in the Bernoulli case, we have mainly a matrix of uh, zero and one. Uh, so it represents the event that the pixel has been reported or not. And uh, this is an issue because the, log, the like now is now uh, non-informative. Uh, in this context, where uh, the noise is maybe severe and the nature is still post, um, we need uh, definitely to incorporate any any prior information we have for our treatment. And uh, in the Bayesian framework, uh, this information incorporated of with uh, through what do we call the prior model, a prior distribution over the treatment. And uh, in our research, we consider a prior distribution on uh, this form, where x is uh, the total variation norm. It's the sum of squares. If you can see there, um, so here are the differences between between the pixels in the horizontal axis and here in the vertical axis. So, but why we need such a prior? Uh, this prior uh, is, let's say, there are many choices, but this prior uh, is uh, particularly good because it preserves the boundaries. So we will see that in your construction, we do not lose uh, the, let's say, the figure of the cameraman. And maybe the camera here, if you see the stand, and um, uh, also it it smooths away uh, the noise of uh, the flat regions, um, such as the sky uh, or uh, the grass here. Um, then, having the likelihood of the data and the prior distribution defined, uh, we can easily uh, calculate uh, the posterior. Which, what is that? Is actually it describes. Uh, how X is affected uh, by the observations. So uh, Bayes' theorem uh, gives us a result. Uh, this is the posterior, uh, the likelihood multiplied uh, by the prior is proportional. And um, the question now is how this posterior distribution can help us, uh, how it can be processed or uh, analyzed. So there are two main methodologies, as Costa says, there is uh, the, uh, the map estimator. So, uh, uh, it is mainly uh, the maximum likelihood estimator or MLE of the posterior distribution. It is a good estimator, uh, sometimes uh, highly, uh, it has high performance, but uh, and, uh, it can be efficiently computed by using complex optimization algorithms, uh, which um, are scalable, uh, which means that uh, dimensionality of the image is not an issue up to this point. Um, the disadvantage is that uh, it cannot provide more complex analysis such as uncertainty quantification. However, let's give an example. So here uh, we are going to use um, what we call uh, reconstructed signal to noise ratio or RSNR. It is a measure of quality. Uh, let's do not give more examples. The idea is that it is a measure of quality based on the ground truth uh, image um, and uh, take us uh, granted that uh, an image of good quality has an arsenal of more than 40 decibel. Um, the person is here, uh, the image has an arsenal of four, and uh, the map estimator uh, is an, has an arsenal of 14, which, okay, is not, let's say, the best result. Uh, but when the problem is that the noise is so severe, the problem is, is ill posed, uh, there is a still an open question what. Uh, we can actually do. Um, 
The other methodology uh, consists in sorry, it consists in general of uh, estimating integrals, uh, useful integrals such as the posterior mean. Um, this methodology is useful because it allows also for the calculation for, of uh, other integrals, uh, such as uh, and help us uh, quantify the uncertainty. Why? Because uh, if we want to calculate, let's say, the probability of x um, belonging to a credible integral um, with confidence level 95%, I don't know, um, this is typically an integral of this form. However, uh, we have a high dimensional integrals now, and uh, this is a difficult and a computationally expensive task. Uh, the other thing that we can do, according to the general uh, limit theorem, etc., is that we can compute, the, the, we can compute these moments, these integrals, uh, from uh, by using samples from the posterior. And uh, MCMC methodologies, Markov chain, Monte Carlo, uh, and algorithms uh, can involve involves such sampling. So our aim is to generate a Markov chain whose invariant distribution is uh, the posterior. And uh, this Markov chain should be ergodic so that we can approximate the sums, the integrals by using sums. <clears throat> uh, in our research, we the common MCMC strategy is to draw samples from, um, from uh, um, the over, of, uh, from uh, the large limit dynamics. Uh, so uh, it is a known result that um, uh, this equation here has a strong solutions under mild conditions on pi, and uh, these solutions are actually uh, samples from the posterior. So solving this equation and let the time go to infinity, we can have an ergodic chain, and then we can use uh, the samples to calculate the, integral, the integrals. However, this equation is not always available. Uh, the solution is not always available. Uh, so we consider uh, a discrete time Euler approximation to solve the above uh, equation uh, and uh, the discretization take this form where gamma is a step size. Uh, however, uh, as uh, uh, I've said before, our problem is quite ill-posed and uh, these mild conditions here that I talked about for the construction for a gothic chain uh, doesn't exist because, okay, here, the logarithmic term now is the sum of two functions. Uh, and we tackle the issue of the differentiability uh, on F, but G is still not smooth and not differentiable. So there is an issue of calculating the gradient of the logarithmic term. And uh, we can deal with this by smoothing uh, this term, uh, which leads us to what we call proximal MCMC methodology. So this is uh, similar to what uh, was just introduced. It, it, we use the Moro UCD envelope uh, it's the minimum of these two functions here. Uh, the envelope is convex and always differentiable. We have the ingredient. And uh, what we left is this term here, which is called proximity operator. And it's mainly uh, the value, the minimum, the value that indeed minimizes this problem here. Um, uh, the proximity operator uh, seems quite technical, but uh, my point, I want to say that it is a common in imaging sciences, and uh, now it can be computed, computed uh, efficiently by using specialized algorithms. So uh, this is uh, an example. You can see here the uniform distribution uh, with a thing, uh, a thing with a blue color. Uh, the other colors are uh, the envelopes. So you can see that as lambda becomes smaller and smaller, we have uh, a better approximation. And uh, we are quite ready. Now we can sample from uh, the approximated uh, differential equation. Now we can approximate from uh, the approximated, uh, we can sample from the approximated posterior. And uh, the resulting algorithm is known as Mora Yusida and adjusted Langevin algorithm, Mayula, and it takes this form. Um, however, uh, as I promised you, we have still the issue of um, the positivity constraint. Uh, in our research, we impose positivity by taking um, the absolute value, the absolute value here. Uh, however, uh, I would like to give a word of caution, let's say here, because gamma and lambda are quite important. Uh, we need to keep them controlled because uh, they are, uh, let's say they are dependent. And uh, 
large step size, if we use, for example, uh, uh, yeah, large step size here, you can give two negative values, two negative samples, and then this kind of reflection here is going to introduce significant values. So uh, here an example. So we have uh, here uh, we have here uh, the image with the partial noise. Uh, it has an arsenal of four decibel. Map was uh, had an arsenal of fourteen. The reconstructed image using Mayula has an arsenal of sixteen. And unfortunately, here I don't I haven't included any um, example uh, of a certain quantification, but um, I haven't arrived yet there. But um, what I wanted I want to show you is that here is the posterior variance, which is mainly needs the calculation of uh, uh, the second moment. Uh, and uh, um, my point here is I want to illustrate that indeed by using samples and by using MCMC methodology, we can calculate any integral we want. Uh, here uh, we can see that um, the variance is quite low at the flat regions and it is slightly higher at uh, the edges. So in conclusion, um, Bayesian methodology uh, can be efficiently used for uh, the task of image restoration and particularly the MCMC methodology uh, cannot just uh, solve the uh, image stories, but also can answer other tasks. And uh, the good thing is that it can be easily adapted uh, and efficiently adapted uh, to other uh, fields uh, such as convex and proximal optimization. Um, one of the future, uh, one some aspects of my future work includes uh, the use of more sophisticated approximations of uh, uh, the stochastic differential equations, such as uh, those derived from uh, the Rand's Kuta Chebyshev methods. Uh, Costas previously uh, gave, gave it a small introduction. Um, and uh, also the implementation of uh, these methods um, to real world uh, applications, uh, which mainly could include uh, tomography or a, either a single photon detection where uh, the noise is expected to be Bernoulli or even geometric. Um, yeah. Thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you very much, Sava. Uh, do we have any questions? And here, of course, are uh, some references. Oh, if yeah. someone is interested. Uh, yeah, Thank you. So this is recorded, so it's a good idea to just uh, flash them and people can just check them later. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so we're going to have, oh, okay. Yeah. I cannot. Um, any question you can put in the chat or you can ask to be unmuted. Okay, sure. so while people are thinking, can you perhaps share your screen again, like your yeah, slides? Yeah. I think um, it's roast or something. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, thank yeah. you. Tell me, tell me. Can, can you go back to that slide where you had the, the positivity constraint? Yeah. Uh, this one, right. So um, you basically reflect, not basically, you are reflecting if you take the absolute value in this case, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah. So is it necessary to reflect? Um, I don't really know what I'm saying, so <laughs> I'm just asking. So for example, can you just... Uh, I don't know, uh, make yeah. a negative value zero and then just use the positive ones. Uh, like so the, uh, so the, the problem is, mm -hmm. can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, so I was saying, is the amplitude really important in this case or? Uh, it is, uh, as I've said, um, it is important because uh, the algorithm uh, is mainly, the all of method is going to collapse because you have this logarithm term that imposes that X should be positive. Um, so here I had that uh, uh, here because A is post semi positive definite matrix X right. also should be positive. It, it, right. We are going to have problems here. Um, the however, uh, it's not like you know the most important cure. I mean the most efficient cure, let's say, mm -hmm. because um, in the sense that uh, it did we have an issue if things go too negative, we have a bias, and so we have let's say, um, a, a not so much good result, let's say. So um, 
there is a balance between uh, the step size here and the lambda between the efficiency of the chain mm -hmm. and how bias and it don't use because if i use large step size i have a good chain but significant bias right if i have a small step size i have let's say uh reflection doesn't play a significant role uh, i can let's say go to zero if i want to or mm -hmm. something uh, slightly increased but uh the chain will be efficient i mean okay. it, i have a chain that barely moves yeah oh i see yeah. uh okay so i think aritha has a question uh i cannot see the chat uh, it's it's okay i have been unmuted here so yeah uh, hi um so a question about the beta how, how do you choose beta in practice Okay, uh, but like, okay, yeah, I'll answer. Okay, here. Yeah. Um, so, um, let's say that we are going to take beta based on previous experiments. Uh, so, there, um, how can I say this? They model some background events, and um, um, based on the experiment, if it is geometric or binomial, uh, beta can take, let's say, a reasonable. Uh, um, a reasonable uh, value. So for now, it is a known parameter. Uh, it is an important one. And um, indeed, it's something to be tuned. But for now, I'm taking just, um, let's say, um, let's say it's like I'm using an oracle or something from previous experiments that beta should be take these values. Yeah. Okay. And, and have you studied how um how sensitive the performance of your algorithms is to, to the choice of beta? Um, so uh, it, it, it depends, it depends the problem. Um, how, can I, how can I give an explanation? Um, um, so for example, in the geometric case, uh, beta should be, should be get a really small value and um, indeed if you how can i say this so if we use a larger beta of what is the normal let's say uh, we have a better result but this is not the case in the real experiments for example the geometric case beta will be really small and this deteriorates things but uh, this is the bit of what we use we get, so yeah we do not make a, yet a comparison about uh, Let's say that we used some methods, but they didn't work well. Uh, this was the main issue when um, in, in the first, uh, in the beginning, we treat beta as a hyperparameter. Okay, so let me mm -hmm. show you. So here we have the theta parameter. Uh, so uh, in the beginning, I treated both um, as a hyperparameters, and, but the methods collapsed. Uh, because uh, the Poisson likelihood and binomial are quite ill-posed and uh, I, I couldn't get a good result yet. So this is where we change to, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, uh, having a beta uh, known uh, from previous experiments, known experiments, yeah. Okay. Maybe it is a future work about uh, how we can, <laughs> um, yeah. Can I, can I ask ask yeah, yes, of course, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, Dimitrius. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely wanna... fine. We, we have time. We have time, yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. So, um, so I was wondering, so um, you're introducing the beta, um, if I understood correctly, to get around the, the problem that you're not differentiable. So I guess instead of introducing the beta, you could um, just do what you do um, for the prior term in, in the end that you do the proximal methods instead of computing the gradient. Yes, that's true. Um, yeah, have you compared that at yeah. all? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a really, a really good, um, <laughs> you know, um, a really good point. So yes, I've tried. Uh, so what I mainly, let me, <laughs> um, so what I've mainly done was so here I said that I take the moral UCD envelope of uh, G, I was taking the moral UCD envelope of F plus G. And uh, then I just uh, took the gradient here of uh, as here and I, I was calculating the proximity operator because is this what you mean? Yeah. 
because yeah it is mainly that so if uh, we take the more the more you say the envelope of uh, these two functions we just then we need to calculate the prox of uh, uh, f plus g so um, it's not uh, so a problem of performance uh, i had let's say similar performance but the computational time was huge because okay. the optimi because I needed to use uh, two sub, uh, let me remember. So, um, so I had an optimization algorithm inside Majula, where in this optimization algorithm, I have other two optimization algorithms. So it was taking so long uh, to have just one sum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank this you. is where I stopped it. I said that uh, we were stopped. I said it would be, we need to find another method. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Thank you. Uh, is, is this is this clear? I don't know. Uh, did, did I answer to? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It was very clear. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. Okay. So one more round of applause by me on behalf of everyone.